Hey guys, Tyler here, and this is the Garage Warrior podcast and video cast. And I'm super excited today to have on the call with me Ido Portal. How's it going today, Ido? Hi, what's up, Tyler? Hey, did I pronounce your last name right? Ido, yeah, Japanese style. Yeah, Japanese style. Hey, well, so I'm really excited today, Ido, to have you on the call um, because you take a very different approach to fitness than most. Uh, trainers and so-called experts take. Uh, before we dig into that though, can you give the people listening to this call just a kind of a 50,000 mile view, who you are and what are you hoping to teach people? All right. Um, so first off, I'm, I'm not a trainer and uh, that's probably the, the most, uh, the biggest difference. I look at myself as a teacher and as a student. Uh, uh, I come from a background of martial arts and uh, different movement practices, sports, um, and later on, slowly transitioning from, from field to field and, and, uh, and from discipline to discipline, I kind of realized that there is a bigger, uh, a bigger interest, a deeper interest into each, uh, each one of those fields, and that was movement. Uh, so I started to talk about movement, look at movement, and that's what I do. Um, for a while now, sharing my perspective and trying to look at things a bit a bit differently than uh, what we've been educated to look at it. So, what would you say is the biggest difference between the way you look at something and the way, like a typical trainer, as we say, would look at something? Uh, nowadays, the, the the biggest, the most common perspective is the fitness perspective. The world of fitness became bigger than basically the world of movement and that's the first place where people uh, turn to uh, the average folk you know is looking right. for answers for answers in health in performance in movement within the fitness world and uh, so that's the first major difference is I don't think that should be the leading uh, perspective I don't think that should be the mainstream sure uh, yeah, so the fitness folks, trainers, uh, they've been, they they developed a, a bunch of tools and a bunch of perspectives. Some of them are very, very good at what they what they do. Some of them less, uh, but it's a very very small area, very isolated area out of the whole uh, movement perspective. Right. Uh, yeah. So your entire system kind of embodies everything that is associated with, with better movement, not just, I want to become fit, I want to lose weight, I want to build muscle. You're really just looking at, can I improve someone's movement? Yes. Yeah, that's what we try to do. Succeeding in that, that's another subject. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a big task. It's a big task. But we, we try our best uh, to address the widest perspective of movement development. Yeah, that's interesting. When you say widest perspective of movement development, so when you take somebody at ground zero, do you look at kind of a broad spectrum of movement patterns that you're trying to teach them, or do you kind of focus on a few basics? Well, you must start somewhere, right? Sure. Uh, but at the same time, I kind of have still in, in the back of my mind where we're heading. And, sure. And the, the wider perspective is always kind of leading the process. Uh, when at any certain moment in time, um, sometimes when working with movement and movement development, you must make very hard decisions. You must uh, realize what stands first and, and what comes after. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, when we're talking about progression here, you, you have a lot of different progressions that you use with people. I'm a huge fan of using movement progressions for training. Um, oftentimes I see that not having any progression is the biggest problem that people try to use. They just don't have a progression of weights, they don't have a progression of movement complexity or anything like that. What's your take on not having enough progression or not having a, a logical journey to follow? Mm -hmm. uh, progression you mean as a technical progression? To me, when I say progression, it just means moving forward. So when I, when I say it, I'm talking about in terms of intensity, so adding resistance to a movement pattern, or in terms of complexity, adding complexity to a movement pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, progression, progression is something, of, of course, extremely important, but it's also uh, very important to realize basic, basic truth in this world that there is no linear progression. Sure. 
which is something that has been, it still baffles me how nowadays still some fitness folks, some movement people that, that are working with movement, they're still uh, deluding people into thinking there is some form of a linear progression, providing them uh, with a certain prescription and saying, you know, step A, you'll get to step B, etc., which is, it's a lie, it's incorrect, it's okay. not going to work, and if it, if it did work like that, then, uh, of course, we would be walking around um, doing amazing stuff, everyone. Um, but um, the, the legend of Meal of Crete is all the traditional uh, look at progression. It's a lie. It doesn't work like that. You're not going to lift a cuff every day on, uh, on your back and uh, one day lift a, a, f- a full-grown uh, full cow. Um, so progression is something very, very... Uh, interesting to look at from the wider perspective of movement, to be able to shift, to play uh, like a DJ between the various tones, to, to know when to change the song, to know, to know where to, to replace certain stimulus with another, uh, when you're becoming stale, uh, etc. Definitely a huge thing, very important, and something that is, uh, is more an art than a science, and very few good artists are out there doing it well. Yeah. I mean, does this come down to just taking an individualized pro- approach based on where each person is at in their journey of movement? 100%. I don't believe in anything else. Yeah. Any mass production, any wads, any big programs, you know, like the cheap big programs that address huge crowds, they might be a starting point. They might be a vector pointing at a certain direction, but to see results, Everything must be individualized. It's it's just um, yeah, it's just just how things are. Yeah. Out of all the modalities you've studied, um, what would you say is kind of the the most important that you've personally learned from? <laughs> wow. It's uh, I I make it a point to not make any of the modalities I studied as the most important. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's that's one of the one of the most basic principles behind my work is once things get really advanced, shift focus. Once you get a hold of something, once you got this 80, 80% of a certain uh, field, and a good understanding, a good grasp, oh. then it's a good time to shift focus, to change, to, to look at other stuff. But definitely in the basic of, of my movement practice, there is some form of... Um, Fraction, fractionizing people, fractionating them into the smallest atoms to be able to separate and really create very fine-tuned movement and fine motor control, which is very abundant in the world of dance. It's something that I, uh, I studied through dance, through looking at dance and studying dance. Uh, some people um, in, in the fitness world know some of the, the, this aspect under joint mobility, but sure. it's it's not enough. It's not enough. And mainly I look at joint mobility. Its importance is not to mobilize the joints. Its, in, its main importance is to create terminology, to create movement terminology that can be used later to sequence bigger and bigger chunks into the real good stuff that everybody wants to do. So that's one of the most basic things that we start with. Another subject is um, the, this self-dominance to be able to control the body in space, inversions, the basics of gymnastics, um, the roll, the tuck, the handstand, um, all these patterns, the lever, the hang, all these uh, human patterns. And of course, the more uh, abundant running, walking, squatting, sitting, uh, the basic human functions. Yeah, I'm really interested because a lot of people might think of you as like a bodyweight guy. And I know that probably would drive you crazy having heard that. Um, what is your take on doing bodyweight training versus resistance training? How do you marry those two together for the best results? 